Welcome back, I'm Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we're gonna to be doing this very simple project. We're gonna be doing some scanning on our printer, we're gonna be uploading it to our computer, and then printing it out to make our very own custom creation. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today into the description box below, so that way you guys can shop those items if you would like to. So let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. So I bought this planner from Hobby Lobby and I really wanted to match it. And I thought this was a great opportunity to show you guys that you can scan anything you'd like in order to make it into your own custom creation. Now, when it comes to things like this, the first thing I wanted to do was I really wanted to match the, the color, the base of the thing that I'm trying to copy. So I was actually very thankful. I found this harvest grape and it really matched very well. So it doesn't have to be exact as long as it's close to the item that you're trying to duplicate. And I also knew that I wanted my base to be glittered. I, you know, it, it has to have glitter, right? So I found uh, in my stash here, I sell sangria and I thought it went really well as well with the color that I'm trying to replicate there. So all I'm gonna do to apply my glitter is I'm actually gonna use the Tacket method. The reason why I'm using the Tacket method is because that glitter that I just showed you, sangria, it is an ultra fine uh, holographic. So it actually looks the best whenever you use the Tacket. Now, for anybody that is new, uh, the Tacket method is simply you apply this glue. It's Tacket over and over again. I'll make sure to put it in the description. Um, it, what happens is once it dries, it'll turn crystal clear and it'll still have a tacky surface, hence Tacket over and over again. And then all you simply do is put your glitter on and burnish it down, which I will show you guys here in a second. Now, after I was done smoothing that all out, I took it and I just hit it with my uh, blow dryer. <laughs> And I hit it with my blow dryer to dry the glue and see it looks all nice and clear and that's how you know it's ready to go. Now all you want to do is simply add whatever holographic glitter you want to burnish down or opals. Opals are very beautiful as well. Uh, I'm just going to sprinkle that on and then we'll start burnishing. Now there are all kinds of different ways I see people burnish. Whatever is the easiest for you guys, I'm just gonna use my fingers. I'm just gonna apply some pressure to my tumbler and just start rubbing away and making that glitter lay flat. I've seen people use pool noodles. I've seen people use uh, rubbing alcohol. There we go, rubbing alcohol spritzed on a rag and do it that way. Again, however way you guys like to do it, go ahead and do it that way. So I'm just gonna completely burnish my tumbler here, and then I'm gonna get a coat of epoxy over top of this, and then we'll be ready to move on to that next step. Now, I also want to mention before I apply my epoxy, I am gonna spray this down really well with my two times ultra clear by Rust-Oleum, just to make sure those epoxies don't wick away when I go apply it, because sometimes these metallic glitters will tend to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that epoxy on. We're gonna let that cure. And while that's curing, I'm gonna show you guys how to scan and print. So you guys can choose anything you would like to scan. And like I said earlier, this right here is actually my planner for next year. And I really wanted to match that. I wanted to make a coffee mug to match it just so I could sit and plan in the mornings. So this is what I'm gonna be using today, but you could use fabric, you could use anything pretty much that, that you can lay down flat into your scanner to be able to kind of duplicate and match. Now my printer is pretty old and technical you know, standards here. So <laughs> no matter what kind of printer you have, whether it's new or old, it's pretty much all the same process. So the first thing that you want to do is you wanna go ahead and put your item right into your scanner. You wanna make sure it's flipped down so that way the portion that you want to be scanned is facing down so that way it can scan properly. <laughs> then we're gonna go ahead and move over to our computer. Now you should have some options pop up to be able to choose the best quality scan that you can. I chose photos, graphics, etc. So that way it can scan the best and, and get all those beautiful colors. So I'm going to go ahead and scan that. Now you could actually go ahead and print right here from this screen if there wasn't anything you wanted to remove. I do want to remove some of this background just so I don't waste my ink and my printer. So I'm actually going to go ahead and save this in a file. 
And when it comes to saving in your files, you want to make sure that you choose the proper format. I am using a Cricut, but if you're using a Silhouette, I'm assuming it's probably the same thing as well. You just want to make sure that you choose a format that your Cricut or Silhouette will take. So I chose PNG for this. I'm going to go ahead and save it and get it uploaded to my Cricut get it uploaded into my Cricut. I'm gonna go ahead and choose complex so that way it's the nicest colors possible again. Now I do have this option to go ahead and remove the background completely, like it'll do it for me, but I ended up just having to do it manually. So now all I'm gonna do is click all the areas I don't want. I'm gonna erase even around the border there and where those hole, where you can see the holes where it goes onto the planner itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that tidied up. Once it is all tidy, I'm gonna go ahead and save that as my print and cut, even though I'm not gonna be using the cut portion of this because I have too many little lines going on there and I don't think it would cut properly. So I'm just gonna cut it by hand. I'm actually gonna be using clear uh, water slide paper for this. So I'll show you guys what I do here in a second, but I'm just gonna go ahead and line my image up. I'm gonna size it down to the proper size. Now, Cricut's dimensions when you go to print are still set at 6.75 by 9.25. So if it's anything above that, it won't print. So just make sure that it's all down to the proper size before you go ahead and press that print button. Also, make sure you turn off the add bleed button. You, you don't want that. Okay, you don't want to waste a piece of paper accidentally doing that. <laughs> I've done that numerous times. So when it comes to adding the special paper into your printer, I like to go ahead and remove anything else that might be in there. It just makes it easier for my printer to realize it's special paper and not get jammed. <laughs> so now you just want to make sure that you properly place your paper the direction it needs to be. For me, it needs to be flipped upside down in order for it to print on the proper surface. Another very important thing to make sure that your paper doesn't get jammed and it prints out very well for you is you want to make sure that you come in there and you want to switch your paper size. I like to come down here and most of these papers are all A4, so I just choose A4 so it knows that it's specialty paper. Then I'm going to come into paper type so that way, again, it, it prints the best that it can. I'm going to choose specialty paper so that way it knows that it's glossy paper and it needs to make sure that it uses just a little bit more ink to make it very pretty for me. I think my husband really likes my technical terms when it comes to this. <laughs> All right, I am gonna go ahead and get that printed out. I'm just gonna let it dry for a couple seconds. It, it dries pretty fast for me. And then we're gonna take it outside and give it a coat of clear spray. Told you guys, we're doing it all. Start to finish, everything, all in one. All right, so now we're outside and I'm gonna give it a co nice coating of my two times ultra cover. Now I can't stress this enough. This is all I've ever used. I've never had any issues. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. I also made another tutorial that I'll make sure to tag in the description there and put a little tag at the top here if you guys wanna check that out. But this is all I do. Spray back and forth. Then I go up and down just like this. And then I do a couple swirls and that's it. That's all I do to seal in my water slide paper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I let that dry probably for about an hour. I let it dry probably for about a half hour outside if, if you're able to, I know it's cold places right now. And then I bring it inside and let it finish drying inside. And what I mean by inside is, you know, my craft area in my garage, not in my house, okay? Cause it's still pretty stinky, all right. <laughs> Okay, so now my tumbler is nice and cured and I'm just gonna trim my rim up really good. And I'm actually gonna sand my rim down as well because I decided I, want to, I wanted to bring my, my decals up to the rim. Again, your design might be completely different than mine. So however you guys wanna do it, it's completely up to you. There is no right or wrong when it comes to making art. Now after I have it all sanded and wiped down and ready to go, I went ahead and kind of did a rough cut around my image just to see how it fit around the top of my tumbler here. And I did notice once I went to go wrap it around that it was just a little bit shy right around where the handle is and that's okay. I'm just gonna improvise and I'll show you guys what I do here in a second. So I decided, well, I'm just gonna take a piece of what I've already done and I decided to take this little piece right down here and I'm gonna use that to put up around my handle, which once I get everything going, you guys will see how that all comes together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out really well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue to cut around the images that I want to have on my tumbler. I'm just gonna take my time and make sure that I get it as close as I can to my image. 
I do wish I didn't have to cut it out by hand. I wish I could have used my cut and print there, but you know, too many little details and I I just didn't want to, again, to waste a piece of paper and just, I'll just do it myself. You know, <laughs> you never know what that Cricut might cut and might not cut out. So, <laughs> but the reason why I didn't use white water slide paper as well is because I don't really like the way it looks once you put it, once you apply it to a dark background, you can still kind of see things through it. And I didn't want that. I wanted this to be nice and bright and pop on my dark color background. So I'm going to show you guys here in a second how I made sure my clear water slide paper is going to pop on my dark background. And I probably could have used printable vinyl, but I didn't have any. So again, I'm working with what I got, you know? <laughs> so we are back outside and we took our decals here. Remember they're fully sealed with clear spray. Now I'm gonna simply take my white spray paint and I'm gonna do these very light splotches of paint around it because I don't want it to pull up and I don't want first I don't want it to blow away it'll blow away if I if I do it too hard and second I don't want any of this paint to pull up but this is really going to make our decals pop on those dark colors then I'm just going to set that off to the side and let that dry I let that dry probably for a good hour I, you don't want it tacky at all you want it to be nice and dried and ready to go all right, it's dry and it's time for the moment of truth. All that hard work, all that scanning, printing, doing, it, it's ready to go. Your, your masterpiece is finally coming together. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take my water because that is how you remove the image from its paper backing as you dunk it into the water and it will release off of the paper backing and that's how you get your decal. And I also want to say that if you are not putting your decal, your clear water slide decal onto a dark base, there was no need for the white paint. You just move on and, and put your decal on. That's all you want to do. But the reason why I did the white paint is so that way it would pop better. Now with typical water slide paper, I typically slide the image off and onto the tumbler. But with this, you want to make sure that you flip and make sure that the image is pressed down onto the tumbler and then slide the backing off that way. It's extremely simple. And I know you guys got this. Now I'm just going to adjust all my little images here and I'm going to make sure that I come through and press all that water out and then I'm going to show you guys how I finished up around my handle. Now that all the water is nice and pressed out I'm going to go ahead and take that little piece of paper that we took off the bottom and I'm just going to kind of line it up and kind of eyeball it. I, I don't use precise measurements here. <laughs> I'm going to eyeball it and then I'm just going to cut a slit right up the middle and then I'm going to make a circle kind of where the handle will be able to go. I'm going to line that back up and see what I need to do. I realize I need to make that hole just a little bit bigger so that way I can make sure that I line everything up at the top there. So I'm going to come through, adjust that, and then I'm going to get that applied to my tumbler hair. Now, once it's ready to be released off its little backing, I go ahead and I line it up at the top where I want it to be. I press it down just like we did the main decal that we did there and just peel it right off. And then all I want to do is come through and adjust everything. And there we go. Now we have a nicely wrapped water slide decal right around the top of our tumbler. Now I'm just going to set that off to the side. I'm going to let that dry probably for about 30 minutes just to make sure all that water is nice and off my tumbler before I apply a coat of epoxy over top of this. I applied my epoxy. I let that cure overnight and now it is ready to add its finishing little details. So I was looking on my particular project. Again, you just take a look at you, what you're doing on your project here and see any little finishing details that you could possibly add to your tumbler to make it just match even better. I noticed all these little speckles. I noticed that some of the flowers are outlined. I noticed there are some like leaf foliage coming out of it and that's all I wanted to do with it. So I went online and I bought these paint markers. I just got them right off Amazon. I'll put them in the description if you guys wanna check them out. But I didn't know exactly which color I wanted to use. So I just went ahead and I tested these colors out on a piece of paper to figure out which color I wanted to use. And I ended up just using the gold that they had in this box. But wherever your imagination decides to take you when it comes to making your own project, let it take you there. But the rest of this project for me is just filling in and making it match as much as I possibly can to what I'm trying to go after here. And that's all you wanna do, make it your own. It's special, it's unique. This is gonna be a one of a kind made by you. So I'm just gonna finish filling in all my little foliage. I just went around and I pretty much just outlined all my little flowers and everything. I even came through and made sure to put a little bit up around the rim to kind of fill in any little places. 
I even added all the little dots, like the little speckles. I was gonna take it outside and put a little bit of spray paint on it, but I decided against it. I just, I thought I would just do the dots. I thought it made it look a little bit more streamlined. And after I'm done doing all these little finishing touches, I'm gonna apply its last two finishing coats of epoxy and she is done. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.